Nestled in the foothills of Northern California and surrounded by the majestic pines of the Tahoe National Forest, lives and breathes a town that formed a great part of California's historic gold rush past, Nevada City. Nevada City actually began in uh, September of 1849 when John Pennington and his friends built the first cabin when they found gold where Gold Run Creek runs into Deer Creek. And they built a cabin there and there have been people living in the area ever since then. A.B. Caldwell, who had a store down at Beckville, four miles down the creek, noticed muddy water coming down Deer Creek to his place, and he came up to see what was going on. And when he saw this gold operation that Pennington and his friends were having, he came up and built a store. It's up where, the, where Trinity Episcopal Church sits now, or about that area. And that was known as Caldwell's Upper Store. And from that time on, see, this was in 1849. Within a year and a half, there were thousands of people in these hills all around here, every creek, and they just covered, just covered the area. Well, the very first people that came were these miners, most, mostly, mostly young single men, and looking for adventure and riches. But there wasn't anything romantic about mining. It was hard work, it was dangerous work, it was dirty work. They had their town meeting in 1850, April the 17th, they had a town meeting and they weren't satisfied with this, the names, they didn't want to be called Caldwell's Upper Store and they thought they should have a better name than Deer Creek Dry Diggings. So they had a town meeting and an election and they decided on the name Nevada. Nevada is the Spanish word for snow covered. But the ones who mined in the rivers and the creeks, if you uh, have spent, well, I never spent eight hours in the water, but if you just spend a half hour in the water of the Yuba River or Deer Creek, it's cold. You know? So no wonder they consumed good amounts of whiskey and, uh, and uh, that kind of stuff. The narrow gauge railroad soon connected Nevada City to the rest of California and the world. Soon men, seeking quick fortunes in mining gold, flocked to Nevada City. And of course the merchants who provided goods, wares, and creature comforts came along as well. Soon all, in common cadence, began to build a great, thriving metropolis. Nevada City at one time was the second largest city in all of California. Standing proud at the threshold of Nevada City is the National Hotel. It's a continuing reminder of this city's historic legacy. Over the course of time, this structure has housed presidents, senators, opera divas, actors of great renown, Samuel Clemens as Mark Twain, many a quick-time gambler and a few-time ramblers as well. And there's even hints that there are a few pretentious ghosts residing at the hotel. The folks of Nevada City are proud of their heritage and are keenly aware of their place in one of America's most endearing stories, the Great Gold Rush of 49. This truly was and remains gold country. You know, Everywhere you turn in Nevada City, you find postcard scenery, a fantastic bevy of local merchants offering great goods and services and delightful dining establishments.
The area also offers year-round outdoor recreation and wild scenery and beautiful, breathtaking vistas. We're going to focus on downtown Nevada City and the events hosted by the Chamber of Commerce here. You'll want to take note of the buildings you see in the background. These are the same buildings I showed you in the old photographs dating back to 1851. They're still standing, they're still here, and they're full of history. At the start of each year, Nevada City is the location for the Wild and Scenic Film Festival, hosted by Circle, the South Yuba River Citizens League. South Fork of our Yuba River played a huge part in the Great Gold Rush of 49, and today it remains a constant feature in the area's landscape as well as one of the most dramatic and scenic riverways in all of California. The folks of Circle began a grassroots movement to preserve and to protect the Yuba watershed. And through awareness and a great deal of hard work, they obtained the wild and scenic status for this great river. The film festival is a natural extension of their work to inspire awareness and to get people to act on behalf of our environment. The three-day festival includes screening of environmentally themed films and videos, workshops with the filmmakers, guest speakers and celebrities, and several social gatherings in and around the downtown area. The Wild and Scenic Film Fest is quickly becoming one of the nation's most important environmentally themed film events.